I'm Lauren Cochran, the Director of Clinical Faculty Development at CUNY School of Medicine, and in this video I'm going to walk you through a really great teaching technique called One Minute Preceptor. You may have heard this referred to as the five-step micro-skills model of clinical teaching. This was a paper that came out in the early 90s targeted towards family medicine residents, but it's very broadly applicable, including all different levels of learners and in lots of different clinical environments. Step one is to get a commitment. Then we probe for supporting evidence. We try to teach general rules. We reinforce what was done right, and we correct mistakes. And you'll notice that steps four and five are really just providing feedback to your learner. So in step one, we ask the learner to make a commitment regarding the diagnosis, workup, or therapeutic plan. And what you may find, especially working with third year students early in the academic year, is that they feel pretty comfortable reporting their HP data to you, but when they get to the assessment and plan, they may start to trail off. And it's very easy to jump in and take over, but we should try to resist this temptation because this is really a golden opportunity for learning. If we can push the student just to the edge of their comfort level or knowledge base, this is where they have the most opportunity for growth. So specifically, we might ask, what do you think is going on with this patient? Maybe what is the most likely diagnosis? If that seems pretty straightforward, you could ask, what's your second most likely diagnosis? Or maybe, what's a less likely but more serious diagnosis we should make sure to rule out? Alternatively, you could ask, what lab tests or what imaging do you want to order? Or anything about the treatment, such as what antibiotic would you prescribe for this patient? Step two, probing for supporting evidence, basically amounts to asking why. This provides a window into the student's thought process and really helps you to identify their knowledge or clinical reasoning gaps so that you can target your teaching. For example, if I ask a student why they want to prescribe amoxicillin for this particular patient with an ear infection, their explanation could range anywhere from, um, I saw somebody prescribe a MOX last week to a very detailed explanation talking about the most likely pathogens and patterns of resistance. And obviously the type of teaching that I provide would be very different for the first answer versus the second. Step three is my favorite. It's teaching general rules or thinking about what about this case can the learner apply to future cases? So let's say we're seeing this patient in clinic, very itchy rash on the hands and feet for about a week. I could say, I think this is scabies because of how the lesions look and how itchy it is. But I'm not completely confident that the learner would know how to apply that teaching point to future cases. So instead, I could offer a general rule such as, scabies should always be on your differential for a pruritic papular rash. Another example, let's say we're seeing this febrile child in the emergency department. I could tell the student, you know, you should have asked his mother about oral intake and urine output. But again, I'm not sure that phrased in that way, the student would know how and why to apply that to future cases. So instead I could say, almost every sick child is at risk for dehydration. They're not feeling well, not eating and drinking well, and they have lower reserves than an adult. So you should always include ins and outs in your HPI. Step four is reinforcing what was done right. So some things that were done well could have been luck. It's important to reinforce. Also, it's nice to hear what you're doing well from time to time and not just getting constructive feedback. And specificity is really the key here. For example, saying good job with your presentation is much less helpful than saying you know, the way you presented your focus physical exam highlighting just A, B, and C was perfect for the ED setting. And finally, in step five, we correct mistakes. So we can frame these as suggestions for improvement, think of ourselves as the student's coach. I do find that the coach approach is extremely helpful in making constructive feedback feel supportive rather than discouraging. And again here, specificity is key. Um, so you could say something like, could I offer you a couple tips for your abdominal exam? Or can I show you how I approach this issue? And that's one minute preceptor. So get a commitment, 
probe for supporting evidence, teach general rules, reinforce what was done right, and correct mistakes. This works very nicely as an efficient teaching package. It's probably not one minute, but is, it is efficient. Anytime you have a case to discuss, you can use steps one through three. And again, the advantages are, number one, this facilitates a focus on clinical reasoning. Number two, it allows you to target your teaching. And finally, if you do use all five steps, it provides feedback with every encounter. I hope that was helpful. Thank you very much.